Let's talk about drawing feathers with colored pencils. And this is something that I think seems really complicated, even more so because there's so many different types of feathers. So let's break it down into a few different sections. And actually I'm going to draw a rooster today. This is a really good drawing because there's so many different types of feathers in here. It's amazing if you want to practice drawing feathers. So I think the best thing to do is I will cover the key techniques that you need to know to draw feathers and then we can talk about how you can apply each of those techniques to the different types. Before we get started if you want to draw this rooster with me it is available on my Patreon. I have a whole host of drawings in coloured pencils as well as graphite pencils and for every tutorial I include really in-depth instructions, all of the real-time footage, a list of all of the materials I'll be using, sketch outlines and of course the reference photo. Now I like to include on my Patreon a number of different types types of drawings. So I would say this rooster is a more complicated drawing. I have a mixture of more complicated and some much simpler but also faster drawings. Do check out the link in the description. So let's take a minute to think about the different feathers that are in this rooster. So first up there is the fluffy feathery texture on its back. This is the yellowy orange feathers. There's also this small blue section where it's got some really quite precise feathers. They're kind of quite slicked back. On the chest of the rooster, it's got some very dark and very kind of, again, I would say slicked back feathers, but they're very subtle in their shapes. There's a little fluffy patch on the back here. And then there's also some, what I'm gonna call traditional feathers around the tail feathers. So essentially we want to work out how to draw all of these different types of feathers. Now the key to these is how you use your pencil. So we need to be building them up using a mixture of circular motions and flicking motions. And we want to layer the pencil one color on top of another to build them up. Now, first off, when I talk about circular motions, I mean creating small circles with the pencil. I use this when I want to be putting down the color in a really smooth and consistent way. If I scribbled back and forth with the pencil, it makes a really scratchy texture that isn't what I want. This is one of the key things that I use with, to be honest, all of my color pencil drawings. I also am going to need to use some what I call flicking motions to build up these feathers. This is where you gently brush your pencil against the paper to build up some kind of furry texture. So let's use these two pencil motions to put into practice actually drawing these feathers. So let's start off here by building up the feathers on the back. These are the fluffier feathers. And I want to start off by just putting down some base layers. Initially, I don't need to worry about building up any of the texture. So you can see here, I'm building up the pencil with those circular motions and I'm just blocking in the lightest color I can see in this section. So here it is a reasonably light yellow. And once I've built up that first color, I then gradually want to be working from the lighter colors towards the darker colors. Still not worrying necessarily about adding in any detail or really any texture, I'm just looking at the shapes. So now I'm building up a much brighter, kind of more earthy yellow, but only towards the very top and very bottom of this section. So it's kind kind of in sort of a zigzaggy pattern. That's where I can see this color. And I'm still doing this with those little circular motions. From here, I want to move on to the next darkest color I can see in this section. And actually the next darkest is a kind of orangey brown. Now I'm still not worrying about adding in any texture, but at this point, I am kind of drawing in a series of lines because the feathers are sorted into almost clumps. It's quite similar, I think, to draw drawing fair. I need to draw in where all of those clumps or all of those lines are going to be. Now I do think that it looks a little bit peculiar, but that's okay. It will all come together at the end. Now the most important thing to know whilst doing this is that it's going to be 10 times easier if you have a really nice and sharp pencil. It's just going to help 
what you're drawing here be a lot more accurate. So once I'm happy with that more orangey color, I can then look for what I think is my darkest color for now in this section. And this is a kind of reddish brown. And I can just put this in, in the darkest areas where I can see this color. And this is kind of creating a template so I can see a bit better what needs to go where. And so actually for all of the feathers, this is the same process for the beginning. I want to start with all of the feathers by building up the base layers. Obviously for different sections, there are different colors that I need to use. So for example, on the chest of the rooster here, the lightest color I can see in this section is a very light warm gray. So I want to put down a really smooth and even cover of this color all over the chest of the bird. For this little blue section of the rooster, I want to be putting a blue down. I would say that that is the lightest color in this area. And then once I've built up those lightest colors, I can once again start working from the lighter to the darker colors. And actually for this blue area here, for example, there isn't a huge amount of detail. There isn't a huge amount of lighter colors. So I can go straight to a darker gray and start mapping in the shapes, all of the shapes around here. So they don't need to be absolutely perfect, but I do want to try and get them as close to what I can see on the reference photo as possible. Now the key here is to firstly be still pressing nice and lightly. If you make an error, you want to be able to easily correct it and pressing lightly will just give you a little bit more ability to do that. It also really helps to have a nice and sharp pencil. You're going to be able to be much more accurate about where this is going if you have a sharp pencil. Once I built up those shapes and noticed that it's looking far from perfect, but that's fine. I can then start marking out all of the key shapes on the chest of the rooster. So still using that same gray, as I say, it's generally quite dark on the chest here. I can just very lightly mark out some of the key shapes, particularly towards the bottom. I would say that they are more prominent down the bottom there. I can then gradually work my way towards some of the darker pencils. So for example, this is the walnut brown. This is quite a dark brown. And I can really start marking in those shapes a little bit clearer. Towards the top, I think it starts looking a little bit patchy. So I'm trying to create that patchiness with my pencil by going over some areas more than others and also kind of working my way around some lighter spot. I think it's key to note that by the time that I've built up the base layers it firstly doesn't look hugely textured, it certainly doesn't look like feathers and also you don't expect it to look amazing. This is kind of what you expect it to look like at this point but by now I have a really good clear template for the chest and that blue area that I can and build on. So let's now look at the tail feathers and you can once again see it's the same method. So putting down over the whole of the area that nice light base layer with the lighter warm gray that I used a minute ago. And then looking for the next darkest color that I can see within the area. So on a lot of the tail feathers, they've got this underlying bluey green tone. So I can put a very light covering of this color, particularly towards kind of the middle and the top. And then I can use the gray to mark in a series of shapes. So I think because these feathers are kind of so big, they're just a series of shapes really. They don't necessarily have a fluffy texture to them, for example. So we just need to treat it like a series of shapes. Now I have got a really in-depth sketch here, so this does make it a lot easier. I'm just trying to copy what I can see on the reference photo as much as possible. So thinking about this little fluffy patch on the back here because it's so light there's not a huge amount certainly not right now that I need to do but I do want to use that flicking motion to create flicks into this section so with a nice sharp pencil just create flicks going in the direction of the fluff around the edge and then we can look at the middle in a minute and then I can carry on marking those shapes around the tail feather here now probably the most prominent feather shape I would say is this big one along the top but it's important 
again, to look at it like it's just a series of shapes. So I can draw in this section along here where the lines are going towards the middle, just looking at it like it is some shapes. And then this is most of the hard work done on the whole bird, to be honest. From here, I can carry on working from those lighter colors towards the darker colors. So I'm going back to that darker brown to mark in some of the darkest areas. But I can't stress enough, I still don't want it to look great at this point. But now, as I say, I have a really good template of all of these different types of feathers. So now before I move on to brightening up and really adding in all of these final textures, I'm just going to go over the whole of the drawing, all of the different types of feathers with the black pencil. One of the keys to drawing anything with color pencils is to get the contrast looking right. So I'm focusing mostly on the chest of the rooster here and going over that kind of patchiness that I added in before. Now I do want to use some flicking motions. You can see me adding in some here to help build up that texture, but it's not gonna be hugely visible at the end. But I do think it adds a little extra something. And all I'm literally doing here is going over everything in the same way that I did before, but with the black pencil. So going over all of the sort of curvy lines in that blue section, going over all of the feather sections on the chest here, and just using a mixture of both flicking and circular motions to really just get the black pencil down. In terms of the texture of the feathers, it doesn't matter too much at this point, particularly on this area, which is gonna end up being so, so dark that it's not going to show too much. It's not actually a very detailed feathered area. So I can keep working my way down the rooster over all of the feathers onto these more kind of larger feathers, I guess, towards the back, really getting that contrast looking right back here. And then let's focus on this fluffy texture up here, the yellow and brown section, because I think this is probably the main feathered section that's the most noticeable. So essentially what I want to be doing here generally is working back from those darkest colors towards the lighter colors. So starting off here with the reddish brown and note that I am working in small flicks now. So the feathers here are quite small and fluffy. So I want to be creating that with my pencil. Now I don't necessarily need to be doing that over the whole of the area. I think particularly the lighter areas are kind of less obviously fluffy, but particularly on these areas around the top, I want to be making light flicking motions to build up the illusion of that texture. And then actually that's the most of the texture that I want to build up here. As I say, with the lighter colors, there isn't anywhere near as much. So let's just use a darker brown to go over some of these areas still with flicks, just to add that little extra contrast. And then what I want to do is smooth this out to try and help it look a little bit more fluffy. So I'm still working from those darker colors towards the lighter colors. And the main thing that I think I need to add in now is quite a vibrant orange. Now, as I say, I don't want to go and add more of the texture. So I'm gonna work in circular motions and just build up the brightness of the color anywhere where I can see this brighter orange. I can then go over the top of this orange with a more earthy red, still working in the same way, working in those circular motions. You can see that this is smoothing out some of the texture, but it's not removing it. You can still see it. I can then fill in a much brighter yellow, really going over the same areas that I did before when I was putting down those base layers right at the beginning. And then once I'm happy with the really bright yellow, I can move on to a light yellow and fill in the area towards the middle. And that's created a really lovely, vibrant patch of feathers that when viewed from a normal distance will look nice and fluffy. So let's focus on this blue section now, and I'm going to build up some more of the blue. So I want to generally be working from the darker to lighter colors. But I also like to think about the main color that's missing in each section. So right now I think that this needs more blue adding, it needs brightening up. Again, with those circular motions, I can work in exactly the same way as I did before. And then actually I think almost all of it needs to be made a lot darker. So I can go back to that gray and again, work in circular motions, building up some of this color. You can see that it kind of makes those circular shapes, all of those shapes I marked in a little bit 
bit less prominent, which I think is a good thing. And I can always go back over them if I need to in a little while. Now, whilst I've got this color, I'm also going to smooth out a lot of the feathers on the chest. As I say, they're not massively prominent feathers. They're kind of quite slick feathers. And so building circular motions on top of this area is going to help create that. But I want to not only build up the gray, but also build up any other colors I can see in here. So for example, some brown along the edge and maybe some light gray just to really smooth this out. I will need to build up the contrast in this area in a little while, but I can come back to that at the end. And then let's do the same thing with building up the colors further, working generally from the darker to the lighter colors on the tail feathers here so really building up more of that blue as well as some of the kind of greeny blue on here and that already looks a lot more vibrant and then I want to use the gray to really work one feather at a time looking at where the light and dark is but basically filling in still the series of shapes and that is what in turn builds up the texture I think in actuality feathers look a lot more complicated than they are and I can then at this point go back to the black and I'm again doing the same thing going over all of those darkest shapes and still just treating this like a series of shapes now around this fluffy patch I am just going to add some extra flicks I can build up a few more but there's not a huge amount that needs doing here and then I'm just going to go over the whole of the rooster in exactly the same way as I have done before so building up all of the kind of more clumpy patchy shapes on the chest here just by going over some areas more than others the same as I did earlier and then smoothing it out one final time with the brown so I think in actuality it's not as hard as you might imagine to build up feathers you always want to start no matter what it looks like with building up the base layers building up those lightest areas and putting in those key shapes you can then either put a series of little flicking motions or just mapping out the larger shapes of the feathers, working generally from the darker colors towards the lighter colors to also build up the vibrancy as you go here. And then at the end, I tend to like to give it one last boost of contrast, particularly on a darker bird like this one. So I hope you found this helpful and I hope it kind of takes the mystery out of drawing feathers. Don't forget, if you would like to draw this rooster with me in a lot more detail, it is available on my Patreon. Happy drawing guys and I'll see you in the next one.